on today is a 2005 Dodge Ram pickup truck with a 4.7 liter V8 engine. And the complaint is when the customer is driving it, they'll come to a, a slow stop or something like that, or, or they'll just be at idle and not moving. And then they'll go to accelerate and it will just, the truck will just fall on its face. It'll just turn off. And then they can always put it back in park and restart it again. And it just continues to do the same thing. And it does it intermittently. It doesn't do it all the time. And the check engine light is off. And there are no stored fault codes. <clears throat> so I got it connected to the truck here. Just do a basic fault code scan. And see what we got. So this fault code is here because I disconnected it, but um, before I disconnected, I had no fault codes and no pending fault codes. So at this point, I don't have any direction, don't know where to go. So I did a um, quick check for any TSBs on this truck for anything related to idling or stalling and I didn't find anything specifically related to that and I didn't find any, um, any uh, recalls or anything that need to be dealt with. So I think this is just a truck that's just been neglected and it needs some service and it's got, it's got some parts that are starting to fail. And uh, so one of the first things that I did, along with checking for technical service bulletins, is I used my smoker here, and I smoked the intake for any vacuum leaks. And I didn't find any, so what I did is I connected up to here and then just uh, put smoke in it for about 10 minutes and didn't find anything. So it's, it's got no, no vacuum leaks. Uh, it's, uh, I'm trying to just... Uh, think of anything that would cause it to intermittently shut off like that. I, I, originally I was thinking ignition switch, but it always restarts and it, the idle goes down before it turns off. So this is kind of leading me into the direction of a very dirty throttle body or an uh, uh, idle air control valve or throttle position sensor fault. And the computer just hasn't picked up on anything yet because nothing has actually full-on failed. <clears throat> so at this point, I am going to start with uh, cleaning the throttle body out. And so that's going to be the first step that I'm going to go with. And so what you'll do is you'll get an um, 8 millimeter socket or a flathead screwdriver and get that clamp off there. And then... Uh, the air cleaner box has these little metal clips on them like this. So get it, get all those loosened and then pop this hose off and take the top of the air cleaner off out of the way. And then um, there's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts. One's going to be located over here to the left. So right in there. And this is to get the upper plenum off, I guess is what you would call this. And then there's another bolt that you get out of there. <clears throat> then there's another hose clamp back to where the throttle body is, right there, another eight millimeter. And before you start tugging and pulling at this, back here is the air charge temperature sensor connector here. So just make sure you disconnect that before you pull this off. So we can pull this off and get it out of the way. And this rubber boot should have come with it. So make sure that's attached or if it's stuck to the throttle body, take it off. Then you'll have the throttle position sensor. You could get that out of the way. And then the idle air control valve. And then this upper vacuum hose here, get that out of the way. And then there's uh, the throttle cable. 
In this case, the uh, cruise control was broken off. So it was just like that. It was nice just sitting there like that. And then there's this other cable. This is your main throttle cable. So just turn the throttle backwards and you can get that cable out. And then there's three bolts. Two on the right, the left and right, and one on the very, very bottom that you need to take out to get the throttle body off. Once you get those three out of the way, you can easily get your throttle body off. And as you can see, it's uh, incredibly nasty. And there's the back side of it. So this is my plan of attack. I wasn't really able to get it to stall before I started filming this part. So we'll just have to make do and show you the after. Couldn't really show you the before, but I think by the way that I've described, I think you get what I'm saying. It's just turning off and the idle, the idle goes down and then it just shuts off and then you can always restart it again. So we'll see what happens once I clean this out and put it all back together. And if it quits doing it, then that's what it was. And then we'll go from there. If it doesn't fix it, uh, we'll take the next steps to uh, fix this problem. And what I like to use is fuel injector cleaner to smear a little bit of it on the towel. Uh, just just get a clean shop towel and this kind of helps for doing the uh, kind of getting the big stuff off and then brake parts cleaner will help clean everything off to get it to work to the point where you're getting all the residual off and all the big stuff off and help you loosen up more stuff as well. The buildup of the uh, the hydrocarbon film that's left on it from being in the intake. And I like to use a clean shop towel just to kind of let me know how how well I did or how much crap came off and then just a regular wire brush. And so I've got it set up here in the bench vise and um, I've got a, another towel here just to uh, prevent scratching or causing any damage. So I got it on a good side of the uh, of the uh, throttle body where I'm not going to break anything like the the um, this cam here for the uh, opening and the closing of the butterfly valve or any of the sensors on it or anything like that. So just be mindful of that when you're doing stuff like this and putting things in a bench vise that you're not over tightening and you're not going to damage it. <clears throat> So I'll get a little bit of this uh, fuel injector cleaner, and about about that much is good. And as you can see there, that's pretty dirty too. Look at all that just from wiping just a very, very little bit. Almost looks like it's brand new. This is good. I'm good with this, and I'm gonna stick it back on. See if this uh, makes the, this truck run any better. After cleaning the throttle body, it made very little difference to help with restoring the idle and stop it from um, stalling from time to time when you have it in drive and you're trying to accelerate. And so, what I decided to do was do what's called a throttle body tune-up. And you can only do a throttle body tune-up on this type of throttle body. 
that incorporates a throttle position sensor that's serviceable and an idle air control valve that is serviceable. And um, when I had the throttle body on the bench vise, I didn't show me replacing these, but they're pretty simple to replace. You'll just need a pair of pliers to get the idle air control valve out, and then you'll need to take out one screw that is uh, T25 Torx. And so it's got one screw down here on the bottom, and then make sure when you pull it out that both of the O-rings come with it. So it's got an O-ring on the tip and then an O-ring on the back. So just make sure they're there, and then make sure the new ones are on the new one. And then you just seat it all the way in until, as you can see, it's completely flush. It's got like a little tooth there, and then once that tooth is flush against the throttle body and on the other side, then it should be good to go. And it'll look like it's, it's going on straight, and it'll look like it's mating up properly. It'll go in easy. One trick is to use a little bit of silicone spray that I always use in all my videos and then just put a little bit around these O-rings here and then that'll help it slide in this little uh, uh, hole that it slides into. And then there's um, this one little 25 T-Torx uh, screw that's about that long and you just tighten that up in there and just push on this at the same time and make sure it's, it's seated in there properly and then tighten that down hand tight with your nut driver and then you can use a torque wrench and if you do want to use a torque wrench go no more than 35 inch pounds 35 inch pounds should be more than enough to hold that in and you could use a little bit of blue loctite as well on the threads which is what I did and 35 inch pounds will be perfect and then now on the throttle position sensor, as you can see, it's got two holes so the screws go in. When you pull it out, it's going to use a, a T25 Torx nut driver as well. And when you pull, pull those two screws out, make sure you have the old O-ring. And then make sure that the new one has a new O-ring. And then just line it up the same way that it came off. And then it will, you'll see how it interfaces with that center piece in there with the two little teeth in there and it will just line straight up and go right on and you'll find it centering and then you put your two screws in with a little bit of blue Loctite and get them tight with that nut driver with the T25 torques on it and then just get it snug and then you can follow it up with your torque wrench to about 35 inch pounds so go evenly do a little bit on this side a little bit on the other one a little bit on the other one make sure it's even going in properly and you should be good. Make sure you put the uh, the uh, blue uh, thread locker on the very tip of the threads of the bolts because right here, from here to here, it's not going into any threads. So the threads actually start right here. And then once you once you got all that good, uh, one problem that I have on some of these older vehicles is they come with these little rubber O-rings in there that that's got serrations on them. And I kept pushing this in with a pick tool, and I couldn't, I couldn't get it to anywhere, get even close to clicking on to the sensor and staying on. So I just pulled that whole thing out of there. So if you ever have that issue, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. Those, those little uh, silicone type, uh, odd looking uh, square, rectangular, I mean, type oval shaped O-rings in there that have the serrations on them. Sometimes you just got to just yank them out and just plug it on without it. 